that means somebody, anybody, then I don't care. Ji means I. Shach means to be concerned about. Be means not. Ji uh, means I. Shach means to be concerned about, to care about. Be means not. So I don't care. Leonard yells, cut. That was a great take. Christopher Lloyd says, I blew it. And he says, what do you mean? He says, I said the Klingon wrong. And he did. He left off the wa, and he left off the vi. Leonard Nimoy says, Mark, how did the Klingon sound to you? And I knew that the correct answer is, it sounded fine. And in fact, it did sound fine. It sounded like perfectly good Klingon. Grammatically, it wasn't what I had in mind, but it sounded fine. So what I did in order to make it work is just on the spot, change the grammar a little bit. And the, way, the main change I made was with this prefix, ye. Originally, ye meant this is an imperative, this is a command. But now, you only use the ye prefix if you're giving a command and the object is singular. So, yehoch has to mean kill one. Because you use a different prefix, which I hadn't made up yet, if you mean kill more than one. So you don't need the wa, that's superfluous, that's extra. So suddenly, what Christopher Lloyd said is grammatically just fine. So the grammar changed there. What occurred to me as I was doing all this, with the sounds changing, with, with the grammar changing, is that language was, was growing. My language was growing and developing and changing at an incredibly rapid pace. It was like the Genesis planet was having an effect on the language itself. So it came in in one form, and by the time it went through this whole Genesis planet thing, it came out a little differently. It did the same thing that real languages do. It did it a lot faster. But real languages grow and change as a result of speaking it, and so did Klingon. They decided that some lines that were originally spoken in English should really be spoken in Klingon. Now I had to match lip movements, English lip movements, to the Klingon words. But it also had to match my vocabulary and grammar and sounds. It couldn't just be a nice phonetic and, 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 and you know, lip syncing match. A little more complicated than that. So, for example, one of the words is the word animal. So I had to come up with a Klingon word or Klingon phrase that sounded different, but whose lip movements were looked the same or looked very close. So what I came up with is Hattebach, animal, Hattebach, animal. It looks the same. One of the things that I kept thinking about as I was making up the language of the film is, are people going to understand it at all? What's going to happen if the line comes up with no subtitles at all? Are they going to buy into all this? And there's one line in the film that comes up twice, the first time with a subtitle and the second time without. And that's how, when I first saw the film, that's how I knew that it was working. Mark! Cho Later on, towards the end of the film, Kirk, having defeated Krug, is on the planet with Spock. But when I saw it with that audience in New York, the audience applauds and cheers. They understood the line, which means the language means the language is working. Okay, it was, it was an incredibly satisfying moment. Okay.